welcome to Easy Mind, Easy Life. Okay, so in this video, I wanted to address, um, and I don't know why, but just the topic of money in general, <laughs> because it comes up so often, it just seems to be such a predominant thing in our society, this money thing, right? And, um, you know, I remember my parents came out to Australia as immigrants, right? And they came chasing the dream because they were in South America and they lived in very, very poor settings when they were growing up, right? Um, when they were little. So, um, very poor. You know, sometimes they went without food in winter. Sometimes they'd have to go without clothes to keep them warm enough, you know? Um, stories of their shoes that would have holes in the bottom and they would put newspapers in their, you know, um, in their shoes to keep the cold out. Because uh, the winters over there, are, you know, much, much colder than here in Australia. So they came out here chasing the dream, you know, of financial freedom. And I watched them, you know, my whole life. Uh, my dad was a bricklayer, you know, and they make such good money. Even today, I imagine they still make really good money, right? Because they're tradesmen. And they, I know he made good money, right? Um, because it was since my when my sister was born i'm trying to go back and remember the, the story correctly from i'm pretty sure as soon as she was born my mom didn't have to work anymore right dad could support all of us just on his wage right and in those days you know it was a big thing but what i learned with time is with money it's not about having a lot of it it's not about the amount that comes in right it's about your attitude towards it your your underlying feelings towards it because no matter how much money they brought in my parents they were always in debt up to here right that they just it was hard to breathe it was like it was suffocating them in the end and the reason for that is because they didn't know how to manage the money right we were never taught even when i went into my adult life i just thought that getting into debt was the way to go credit card for everything right get a credit card you stick that you know everything goes on the credit card um i was never taught how to manage money how to handle it until one day you know i just thought i'm just going to go to a financial counselor and get advice right get him to look at all the money coming in all the money going out and just for him to tell me you know or for that person it ended up being a, a man and um for him to give me advice, you know, on what to do. And so he gave me a few tips, right? And then I realized it was really more about managing the money rather than more money coming in. Because if you don't learn how to manage it, it doesn't matter how much is coming in, you're just gonna keep spending more than what's coming in. Because the problem is that that underlying feeling of lack and scarcity is always there. You haven't addressed that issue yet. You see, my parents coming from very poor backgrounds, they come to Australia with that underlying fear of lack and scarcity, going without food, going without proper clothing to keep warm, all these things, you see. And so they come out here and no matter how much money they made and how many beautiful things they had, right, it was never enough. They were always in debt. And it got to a point where they had enough and they just wanted to go back home. It was like, it was, it was all an illusion, all this chasing money, chasing money, that that was going to be their freedom. That was going to be their, it was all an illusion. It always is anything that's outside of you, which money is outside of you can never set you free. That is the illusion because you already are free. You were born free. Money is that's just a cage for a lot of people. I would say for almost everybody. Because for some, the cage is that there's not enough money. There's a lack. They can't seem to get enough of it, no matter what they do. And for others, it's this not wanting to spend it. You know, it's like they, they just, every single penny that comes in, they just latch onto it. Like, you know, if they don't, you know, they'll end up poor. And won't be able to afford their lifestyle. So, we, you know, there's, it's very hard to find the middle ground where they let money flow in and they, they let the money flow out easily. 
you know, I've witnessed the two extremes, the one where it's just spend, 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 you never have any money, you always spend more than what comes in. It's almost like you're allergic to having money. <laughs> but then, you know, there's the other extreme of won't spend a cent because there's that fear of lack as well. It's, it's no different to the one that spends it all because he doesn't want to have any. The one that won't let go of it is the same fear. There's a fear of lack. There's not enough of it in the world. You know, they have to hold on to it. So, I mean, money's been a funny topic in my lifetime. It's been really funny. And funny now, I've gotten to a point where <laughs> I don't need anything that requires money. You know, I don't need everything I want is not out there anymore. And um, yeah, I just, um, the, the, the knowledge I've gained from watching my parents is that it doesn't matter how much, you can have buckets and buckets and buckets of money coming in. But if you're not managing that money, and if you're coming from a place of lack and scarcity, it will never be enough. And I guess that's the same for everything. You know, it's the same with love. There's not enough love in the world for those who are coming from a place of lack and scarcity. You know? So. Yeah. And then, you know, chasing that dream that, oh, when you have the perfect house and you have the perfect car and everything's all aligned, that you have all the beautiful material things that you ever wanted. We had that when I was growing up. In my street, we were like the envy of the street at the time because my dad was a bricklayer. And so we started off with this tiny little fibro house that had, wasn't so tiny, I'm thinking now, because it had three bedrooms. But then it had three small bedrooms and then the living area and then the kitchen and the bathroom all in one. It was kind of this little box house to start with that I remember. And um, on weekends, uh, my uncles would come and help my dad and he renovated the whole place. He covered it all in brick and then he added, he extended to the back of it. Uh, and it was huge. It was beautiful. We had air conditioning. You know, we had everything. We would have had a swimming pool. But my mum was terrified, you know, of the water, of people drowning. So we weren't allowed to have a swimming pool. And, um, but we had everything else. We had a trampoline, you know, we had, <laughs> we had a ping pong table. We had this huge yard that we could play, you know, and do all sorts of th wonderful things in the backyard. So we had everything we could possibly want. And the kitchen, oh. My dad made my mom the biggest kitchen I had ever seen. Now they're common, but back in those days, you know, I'm talking like over 40 years ago, that wasn't common, you know, to have that massive kitchen. And in the middle, there was all one side that I remember, it was so big. All one side, it had the fridge, then it had the, the cooking area, right? All against the wall, all up against the wall. And then you walked up this hole, there's this bench space at the top near the, um, the stove and then up on the wall there was the sink the whole sink area was up against that wall at the end but on the in the middle <laughs> there was this huge island this bench this huge bench with storage right which wasn't common in those days either he just designed it he thought that was a good idea and then to that side on that wall that he made for her like the kitchen was almost the size of the whole front part of the house right it was just insane all on that side was all cupboard space, all pantry space, whatever you want to call it, where she could put all her crockery, pottery, pot, you know, the pots, everything went into that. Everything had to do with the kitchen. She had a whole wall against there with shelves and, you know, the doors to close it. And it was just insane. <laughs> we had this massive kitchen. And next to that massive kitchen, he had made us a playroom for my sister and I that we could play inside, which again, in those days, we didn't have rumpus rooms, right? That wasn't a common thing in a house. My dad made it for us. And that was almost the size of the kitchen. And he added a second bathroom because we were always fighting over the one bathroom we had at the front and there was four of us. So we had this massive house. And by the time my dad had finished building this beautiful house and 
I think we only enjoyed it for about four or five years and they were both sick. My dad had started having heart problems and um, yeah, he, was, he had had a heart attack already before he was even 40. And my mum was having back problems. She could hardly walk, you know? So I remember back in those days, um, they were like, we've, we've had enough. We can't, we can't keep up with this lifestyle, right? Um, but we had everything. We even had the new car with the new smell and everything, you know? It was, <laughs> it was just amazing. And um, I used to go to private school. They were paying a fortune for me to go to this private school. And we were living the life, you know? But it's all on the outside. It doesn't mean anything if on the inside you're unhappy, you know? And that's the reality, you know? It's nice to have these things. You enjoy them. They're fun. But at what cost? You know, what's it costing you inside? Here's something for you to think about today because no one was happy, they were all sick. You know, we ended up having to leave. We went back to South America. They sold everything. They wanted to go back home. They didn't want to be here. They didn't want to live this illusion anymore of this reality that wasn't real. You know, the whole financial freedom thing that wasn't real for them because underlying that was always the lack and the scarcity that they grew up with. They never healed that. So, you know, that's life. All right, my darlings, I love you guys. Remember to click like and subscribe below so you don't miss any of the messages. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.